I am a nurse by profession, by education. Um, I uh, actually spent a number of years working in children's hospitals when I graduated from nursing school. So I worked at a children's hospital in St. John's, Newfoundland for a year. And then I spent a number of years working at the hospital for sick children. So uh, I actually went back to school, um, got an undergraduate degree on a part-time basis, um, expressly with the intention of working in the community. And when I graduated, I applied um, to several public health units, was interviewed by the City of Toronto, the City of North York, and the City of Scarborough. And uh, Scarborough came through with the first job offer, so I started as a public health nurse in the City of Scarborough on September the 30th, 1985, 29 years ago. At the time of amalgamation, of course, we all had to um, re-interview for our positions. And uh, so my first permanent management position um, began shortly after amalgamation. And at that time, we worked in a regional structure. So I was looking at, uh, I was responsible for healthy living programming, which was looking at uh, nutrition promotion, physical activity promotion, um, and tobacco use prevention and control. So that was kind of my first introduction to tobacco um, as, a, as an issue. And uh, one of my responsibilities um, was to uh, report to the ministry on our uh, provincial, our participation in a provincial heart health program. So we received a fund of money. We had community networks. We were looking for in-kind contributions. Um, and uh, there was a network in the former East York and one in the former Scarborough. And I uh, played a role in amalgamating those two networks into one Eastern region network. Um, and one of the programs that was running in the former East York was a tobacco use cessation clinic. Um, so there was a lot of um, history to that clinic in terms of, you know, like looking at the needs of the community. Um, and it was fulfilling a very, um, you know, an identified need in the community. There was a wonderful partnership with Toronto East General Hospital. Um, and um, so that was really my introduction to tobacco control. Um, but, uh, you know, the involvement deepened, I think, after the election of the Liberal government in 2004, tobacco control was a huge part of their platform, and they uh, expanded funding for tobacco control work, and uh, there were calls for proposals for innovative programs. So um, in partnership with uh, York Region and Peel Region, uh, we submitted proposals to take a couple of programs that had been developed locally, um, not to kids, uh, and breathing space, uh, and apply for some funding to see if we could uh, oper implement the programs regionally, and eventually to expand them provincially. So it was uh, an interesting time to, uh, with the funding and the opportunity to, to collaborate, to start looking at tobacco control uh, from a local, uh, regional, and provincial perspective. Another opportunity that um, I pursued um, in, I think it was 2005, 2004, 2005, um, as the, there were consultations going on around the province um, to craft the um, Smoke Free Ontario Act. Um, and because of the work that I'd done with other health units, I'd actually developed a, a pretty wide network of tobacco control practitioners in public health units and non-governmental agencies uh, around the province. And I was aware of the fact that um, the ministry was looking for people to come uh, on a secondment basis to um, help develop the provincial programs and services behind the legislation because um, I mean, one of the things that, that you have to know about tobacco control, and it comes out of a lot of experience from the states, is that 
the only way to address tobacco um, is to address it comprehensively. So you can't just look at helping people quit. You can't just look at um, you know, doing something to help young people from starting to smoke in the first place. You can't just look at legislation and enforcement. You have to look at all of it. As I look back on my, on my career, I think there are a, a few um, lessons that I've learned in terms of how to be an effective public health practitioner. And I think uh, the first one would be uh, talk to a lot of people. Um, I think that as uh, over our time since amalgamation um, and with increasing uh, emphasis on accountability, we've um, become very focused on the kinds of programs and service we offer and looking at documentation processes and policies and you know, ways of doing things. But um, that can sometimes drive us to um, being very, very focused and specific in the kinds of programs and services that we offer. But people don't live their lives in neat little boxes and they don't have problems that line up neatly with the way we organize ourselves. So I think the most effective public health practitioners are the ones with the largest networks. Uh, my, my staff and some of my colleagues will uh, recall that one of my pet phrases is look up and look around. It's not just about what you have and what you do, it's about who you know and who you can bring to the table when the people that you're working with in the community identify other issues and needs that go beyond your own focus or expertise. One of the things, it's, a, it's been my policy um, as a manager to always make sure that my new staff attend Board of Health meetings. I think it's really important for us all to understand the political context within which we work, um, both locally, uh, provincially, nationally, and sometimes internationally. So it's certainly been an eye-opening experience, I think, for new staff and also any students that come um, for placements with any of the members of my teams. I encourage them to go to Board of Health meetings too, and it's always an eye-opening experience for them. And it tweaks an interest in the political nature of our work. Health is political and it isn't addressed only by the work that we do or only the work that's done by those agencies um, and institutions funded through the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care. We need to look at housing, we need to look at you know community recreation, we need to look at employment and sometimes we can't do a lot about that directly, but we can collaborate with partners within the city um, and outside of the city to address people's needs holistically. When I started working in public health, we were a relatively small health unit and we all sat in one location. Um, so it was very easy to just walk across the room to have a conversation with somebody. Um, it was very easy to get to know everybody. Um, and, you know, when amalgamation happened, all of a sudden, you know, we're working with colleagues in offices far, far away. And initially, we had phones that didn't connect with each other and computer hardware and software that didn't connect with each other. So communication was a huge barrier. I almost uh, thank uh, Y2K, because um, I'm not sure uh, that we would have had the resources to address some of those issues if it weren't for the fact that we were all concerned that all of our technology was going to crash. Um, on January the 1st of 2001. Um, so, you know, communication has become more difficult. Um, knowing colleagues has become more problematic, so it just means we have to work a little harder to get to know each other. Um, I think our administrative processes have increased as well, and so again, it's kind of looking at where they actually facilitate and where they're getting in the way and always being mindful of the fact that 
Our raison d'etre is not to fill out forms, it's to provide service. So participating in uh, the development of innovative programs and services, but probably more than that is contributing to the development of uh, the next generation and generations of public health practitioners, um, encouraging their interests and their passions and creating opportunities for them to pursue advanced learning. Um, and really um, getting them to think about where they see themselves in two years or five years or ten years and appealing to their desire to make a difference because I firmly believe that everyone that's here is here to make a difference. There have been times when, you know, uh, I've expressed probably more frustration and uh, than wasn't helpful. Um, and so to do differently, I think, would always be uh, mindful of my own desire and commitment to make a difference and to um, approach some of those challenges and frustrations with um, a little less angst and perhaps a little more enthusiasm about creating solutions to problems. I mean, I was here during SARS, so the, um, the stress and the intensity and the immediacy of that crisis was something that um, I think I would categorize both in terms of some of my best experiences and my worst experiences. I know that for several months, um, I, uh, I would go home and awake like in the middle of the night with night where I had, a, I had a recurring dream about running between the 8th and 9th and 10th floors, which is where all of our work was done, with pieces of paper to try and find the right person to give it to or the right file to put it in. Um, so it was, it, was, um, it was stressful. It changed every day. Um, initially, it was so scary. And um, I mean, my own family were calling me to find out how much danger I was in. And I was able at least to reassure them that I was talking to staff here who were talking to staff in hospitals who were dealing with patients. So I was far removed from any concern of contracting SARS myself. But I was, um, like all of, we, all of us were, um, very stressed and um, very, very concerned about what was going on. The way we pulled together, the leadership that uh, was provided, the, um, the teamwork that um, arose from that were some of my best um, experiences in, in Toronto Public Health.